Hey guys, so today is Monday. <laughs> Monday is September 30th and it's 2024 and <clears throat> I'm outside right now at my friend's house and um, I am going to try and keep this message short because yesterday I was going to try and keep it really short. I did not. It was like 20 minutes or something like that. Um, so today's, um, and again, for those of you who have either been following me along or, or you are just following me just started, um, because maybe my channel came up in your feed and you're like, what's, what's this about? Um, I record daily video journals, um, like vlogs for my children. Um, we are involved in a... I say horrific because of the circumstances surrounding it, <clears throat> but any case of parental alienation is horrific. Um, the kids are the ones who ultimately um, are the victims in it. Yes, the parents are also victims, but the kids have less life experiences to help them understand and help deal with it. <clears throat> I'm believing um, that the foundation that I did lay for them was substantial and God's going to do the rest and so we're, so will my kids in this. Um, but anyways, I just want to say real quick, just a real quick note, if you're wondering what this is all about, you can read the about in my YouTube channel. You can also... Um, can also read the um, description for today's video um, that has just a little bit I think the about channel has a little bit more I was limited to words so I couldn't do like a whole lot but this is yeah so I'm gonna move on from there um, I feel like today's message um, <clears throat> to my kids and maybe whoever is following this um, <clears throat> is to talk about a word mercy the word mercy and what it means and how the hebrew word for mercy was rakum and every once in a while i read i pick a word out of this 52 hebrew words every christian um should know i was going to say must but every every christian should know um we are Trinity believers, meaning, um, and I say that on behalf of my children, um, we believe in our Father God in heaven, Jehovah, and we also believe in Jesus Christ, which his name is actually Yeshua, um, and then we also believe in the Holy Spirit, so we're Trinity. Um, we believe in all the feasts um, that the Jews celebrated for the most part um i don't celebrate hanukkah <laughs> um but yeah so that's kind of a foundation so i found a lot of um the words in here are really i don't know i just i guess i can see that sometimes these they really speak to me and today i feel like this word truly speaks to me and it's rakum, R-A-C-H-U-M in Hebrew. And the word means mercy. So I'm going to read out of this book. Um, of course, it's not me who wrote the book, but another author. <clears throat> the prophet Jeremiah wrote that God's mercies never cease towards his followers. And they are new every morning. And that can be found in Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. The word mercy used in this verse is a Hebrew word, rakum, which means to actively, it means actively, show compassion. So that's, that's not just saying it or thinking about it. You're actively showing compassion. According to this word, or according to this verse, God actively shows compassion towards us every single morning. Ancient believers used to think that every night while they slept, their souls went back to God to be close to the Creator and be given wisdom. 
Then God would return their souls to them every morning to begin a brand new day. Now, um, I am reminded that I know I have already showed that I have already shared this word. I've read the same page um, out of this book before, but for some reason, I really felt like the Lord said, "No, nope, I, I want you to read from this book the word vacuum mercy again." And if it's for me solely. Or if it's for my kids or whoever happens to find this, there's something that I think each of us can apply our, to our lives to actively show mercy for someone in our life or, um, I'm sorry, to actively show compassion. Because the word mercy used in the verse when it says that God shows mercy every single morning. Um, this word rakum means to actively show compassion. That is what mercy is about, is to actively show compassion. And um, if God is doing that towards us every single morning, that I also believe that God is asking us to actively show compassion, which is mercy, rakum, towards others. And like I was saying before I was caught back up into my book, is that um, maybe this is for somebody and you're, you're being reminded to show compassion, show mercy for a particular person. Maybe it's a coworker. Maybe it's a child and one of your kids. Maybe it is um, your parent, one of your parents. Maybe it's your teacher or your coworker. Um, your neighbor or your spouse. Um, I know I repeated myself there, but, um, you know, I think it's, it's a good reminder. Um, I'm going to keep reading. Um, while this is a great picture of God's compassion towards us, I know some of us find it hard to start a new day because we still carry the troubles of the previous day. Maybe you wake up feeling like you don't deserve God's compassion. Maybe you're like me, and of course that's the author, although I might relate. Maybe you're like me, and you wake up some mornings feeling like the bad things that happened in your past will overwhelm you in the day ahead. Um, I think all of us can relate to that, right? To this, my friend, there is an appropriate way to use your story, not as an excuse, but as a testimony to God's faithfulness, his ability to free you from your past. That is God's mercy. That is his compassion towards us. That is his rakum, which is mercy. As the sun rises this morning, well, it's already rose, <laughs> but as the sun rises tomorrow morning, may you be aware of God's tangible compassion and mercy towards you his rachum towards you um i am reminded of a message i was listening to the other day and it talks about moving forward pressing towards the upward calling of what god has for us um the book of Hebrews chapter 11 is one of my absolute favorites because it is a reminder that so many of the Bible, the ones who made it into the Hall of Fame, the Bible Hall of Fame, which I believe is really Hebrews chapter 11, a lot of them are in there. They didn't focus on the mission at hand. They didn't focus on what it is the task that they were called to which may have felt overwhelming but they they kept a focus on the upward calling that god had placed upon them so whatever the situation is or was um they they had actually the lord had shown this to me a while ago and it was, he had actually told me, and then I could like see it visually, but I felt like the Lord said, keep a laser point focus on me. So when you're looking at something, if you take a laser and you point it on something, let's just say you point it at the tip right there, you are focused on 
that point, right? And when you do that, everything else becomes blurred out. You don't really see this. You don't really see this. You see that. You see it in the peripheral, but you're not focused on it. And so what they had done is they kept this, this focus, maybe even a laser point focus of the upward calling. So they weren't thinking of like, their time here on earth in fact they multiple times it is said that they were um travelers in a foreign land it wasn't their home they knew this earth this place is not their home that heaven is their home and when their mission their calling is done here on this earth they know time's gonna pass away when we go to heaven, we will have an eternity. Time never quits. It never stops there. It just keeps going and going. And for the unfortunate souls who die deceived, who died double-minded maybe, you know, going cold and hot, believing what God has to say, and then listening and believing what the world has to say, and going back and forth, those souls will also not make it into heaven because Jesus actually says, he goes, I will spit you out of my mouth. You are, no, you are neither hot nor cold. Therefore, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. And the word that he uses to describe him spitting them out of his mouth is a violent, a violent spitting them out. It would have been worse for, or it is worse for them because they knew the truth, but yet they love the world. And, um, and so, I mean, I guess to draw this back around, keeping a focus, keeping a focus on heaven. My mission, my goal here on this earth is, will be, it feels like an eternity. It feels like forever. If you live to 120 years old, it would feel like forever, but it is still not as long as eternity. And what God is saying, and, and many saints, is keep a straight focus. Keep an upward focus. Keep a focus on God. Keep a focus on moving forward. Not like in the past. Um, and I bring this all like to the um, to what I'm talking about right now. Because God has compassion and mercy on us. Despite even us waking up and bearing the burdens from yesterday. Bearing the burdens from a year ago. It is the, the enemy. It is us actually choosing to believe the lies and the deception of the enemy. To keep questioning the past, to keep questioning the decisions that we made in the past and the things that maybe happened to you in the past, that's up to us. We either believe it or we shut it down. Yes, that happened, but now I am moving forward. I am pressing forward to the upper calling God has for me. I am going to tell the, the enemy to shut up. I am going to silence the enemy in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to ask the Lord. I'm going to ask Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, God, what do you have for me today? Because I know that your rakum, your mercy, your compassion for me is more than enough to cover any past mistakes or decisions or whatever. And then also enough for today in whatever it is that you have for me today. So I just want to remind you of that. I don't even know why I talked about it, but I will remind because right now you'll see it all over the internet. You see it all over YouTube. You hear it in your churches. There is a great, great, great deception in our world, in the United States, in every home, in every church, in every relationship, every family. There's a great deception. And I think that's why Jesus said, keep a pinpoint laser focus on me. Because all the distractions can begin you going from right to left, hot and cold, hot and cold. But what does Jesus say? What he'll do with those who are hot or cold? This is the refiner's fire and he, it's going to keep compressing and compressing. Because there are character traits within each of us that God says, I got 
I got to refine that. I got to get rid of that because that cannot enter into heaven. Now, what does that mean? I'll let you make that decision. Of course, I always take everything and anything I say and apply it to the word of God. Not what someone is preaching about the word of God, but open up the Bible and look at it. Um, but yeah, I just want to remind you, there is such a great deception going on in our world um, and keep your focus on Jesus and take what people are saying no matter who it is the highest priest um, whoever it is a pastor take what they're saying and apply it to the Bible apply it to the Word of God because that is truth so then you know does it line up with Scripture um, I wouldn't even apply it to what you had lined up with Scripture into the past unless you have it written down because the deception is so great, so great. God's rakum, his mercy, his compassion towards us is amazing. So if we make a decision, we make a mistake, and we begin to listen to the lies of the enemy or the lies of the enemy that are being spoken through other people, his compassion and his mercy, his rakum, is incredible and it's amazing. And it's as simple as, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Boom. He's amazing. And he will, number one, get rid of those. The enemy may try and, and try and remind you. Remember when you listened to that pastor. Remember when you did that one thing or whatever it is. Just tell the enemy, go away in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to believe your lies anymore. So that's all I have for today. Yay, it's 16 minutes. So I'll try and do a shorter prayer. Um, by the way, for those of you who just joined me or just joined this channel, I try and keep whatever it is I'm talking about, if I'm teaching them how to cook or how to clean or talking about the Hebrew words, like whatever it is. Like sometimes it's just life in general or sometimes I take them shopping or touring to new areas. Um, I try and keep my messages under 20 minutes in case they're not watching because I don't know. I have no contact with my kids. They have no contact with me. Um, it should be illegal in the United States. It should be. Um, I am a safe mom and a loving and caring mom. Um, but you can read the about this channel and find out more if you want to. Um, I'm going to end in a prayer. Father God, I just thank you so much for choosing me for such a time as this. Lord, I bless the listeners, the followers who are following along, Lord. I bless them with an immense amount of your rakum, your mercy, showing them your compassion for them. But Lord, I just impart into each believer, each follower, Lord, for them to also feel and see the rakum, the mercy, the compassion that you have for them. Father, I just thank you for even them, even the listener and the follower, for choosing them to live in such a time as this we are so grateful thank you lord but we ask not but we also ask that you increase our ability to, to decipher between deception and the truth the word of god lord may the conviction of the holy spirit be strong in reminding us to line it up with your word and your truth father again i thank you for choosing me to be a mother to my kids thank you for my kids thank you for the blessing that they are to me and the blessing that they are to this world lord i continue to pray may your will be done not not my will lord but your will be done here on earth in this court case and in this situation as it is in heaven lord may your will be in, be done in each one of our lives as well lord as well as the listener who's ever following along and Lord, I ask, Lord, please reunite me with my kids soon. In your heavenly name, amen. I love you guys so much. There is a hug to you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, I love you. Bye.